Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mildly Gothic. If you are new here, what I like to do is a variety of artsy things, often with a gothic or dark twist to them. Today is the third part in what has been the only series that have been the last two out of the last three videos I've posted, and that is working on this costume. So this is the armor from The Mandalorian, and if you haven't seen already, I've already posted videos on how I've made her gloves, and then also um, this apron right here. So if you're interested in those, uh, I'll try to link them up in the corner so you can go ahead and check those out. There's also a playlist where I will be putting the full videos for everything related to this cosplay. The today is going to be about the armor, her chest plate. This is my first time working with foam to create armor. It is EVA foam. Uh, you can get it in a bunch of different thicknesses and sizes. I just bought mine from Michael's because uh, I needed it ASAP and Amazon was gonna take too long to deliver it to me. But it's actually surprisingly easy to work with. I did use, uh, I will put the channel name on the bottom of the screen because I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, super well-known cosplayer, uh, super helpful videos and information and all of that, but this is completely my own design, my own structure, which means there are some flaws, but I absolutely love it. So if you think that sounds interested, interesting, and you're interested in seeing how I put together the rest of this, uh, definitely stick around. You can hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future videos. And um, I think that's it. I'm really excited for this costume. I've been putting it together for Huntsville's Comic uh, Pop Culture Expo, which is happening uh, this weekend, starting tomorrow. So that's why I haven't really posted that much. I've been rushing to kind of get this done. So I'm really happy with it so far. I'm really, really excited. So I can't wait to show you guys how I've interpreted this, what I've done, what I've learned, and kind of what I want to work towards in the future. I hope this is not the last version of this cosplay that I make because I do think there are things that I could make improvements towards. But I mean, we got a lot of parts of it. So I'm really excited. If you're interested in seeing how I made the hammer, the helmet, all the rest of that, definitely hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you in my wonderful little corner of the internet. I have gotten uh, some new subscribers recently, so again, apologies for being really bad at uploading schedule. I've just been desperately trying to finish this because I do intend to enter the costume contest. So we will see how that goes. I will update all of that in future, in the future videos related to the rest of this cosplay. Um, with all of that said, <laughs> let's get into it. So the first step to making any foam armor is almost always creating a duct tape form. And when you are doing this by yourself, it can be very, very hard, especially if you, the chest is your target of focus, which is why I was very, very thankful to have a dress form. So you wrap the entire intended area in saran wrap first, and then you cover it in duct tape. The saran wrap basically protects whatever you are wearing underneath from the duct tape so it doesn't get ruined. Um, I probably should have had more of a structure or paid attention to how I was putting the duct tape on, but really I was just trying to make sure I covered all of the areas that I thought I would need and create kind of the general shape. What I did not do that I should have done at this point was actually care about what the back looked like and focus on getting a good structure and coverage for the back of this as well. I didn't do that, so I ended up having some issues with that and I'll get to that later down the line. But having a dress form made this actually really easy and very helpful towards being able to get the shape for myself. It is an adjustable dress form and I know my measurements, so I have it already adjusted to my measurements. But even still, you know, it may not be the most reliable, so you just kind of work with it as you go. I also chose to draw on kind of all of the detail for the armor. This was definitely not necessary, but it kind of gave me an idea of how far down like the stomach or the chest the armor needed to go which did actually end up kind of being helpful in planning out the rest of the pieces and how they attached later i definitely was completely wrong with my original sharpie drawing but it gave me a good idea of where i needed to make the initial cuts to actually start cutting the base of the foam out this is where i should have taken more care i just chose to cut it straight up the center back because i was only planning on using this for the front of the armor I definitely could have used this for the back of the armor as well, but I did not. So I just cut it off the dress form so that I could try it on. Okay, so apologies for how my hair looks, but we're going to try this on. 
And typically you do this on yourself, but I am currently uh, by myself right now. And so as far as making sure that I could actually do it, I'm utilizing the dress form. So definitely gotta cut the neck down because that's a little choking tight. So that's the interesting thing with dress forms is they may not always fit, but I do think, let's see, where's the belt? If we, if we imagine the belt, not that I can see it, but I do think that that looks about uh, right. I know it needs to be pretty close to the belt and the belt's gonna sit pretty high. Um, Fits, fits where it's supposed to quite nicely. I'm not gonna do a full back. I haven't decided how far, but it's just gonna kind of cup the shoulders and the I'm damaging my own artwork. Um, but it's gonna cup the shoulders and then cup the sides. So definitely need to cut the arms down a little bit and cut the neck down. Um, and I think I need to adjust this drawing. I think this needs to be bigger, but that wasn't really as important. That was for me to kind of figure out the, the sizing and how far this should go down. So uh, I'm gonna make some adjustments. So I traced out the cut armor onto my thick foam. I believe this was six millimeters. And if you'll notice, I made two darts in the side. I did this so that it would lay flat and so that I could account for the curvature of my chest in the armor and not make it weirdly shaped. Uh, this was just kind of a rough outline because I didn't need it to be perfect. I could always trim it down smaller, but I couldn't really make it bigger. So I dressed my mannequin in the foam and it is duct taped to the dress form. What you don't see, what you did not see is the darts are glued together. The way you glue foam together is using contact or rubber cement as it's called. You apply a very thin layer to both sides you allow it to dry completely. Essentially, you do not want to feel tacky anymore. And then when you press the two pieces together, they will stick immediately. It's actually kind of crazy impressive how well it sticks. But beyond that, what I'm doing is I'm tracing out the general outline so I can start trying to figure out the size that I need to cut out the shapes to go on top. I started the detail on top of the chest plate with the very center. Because I had that measured, I knew where it was. I was actually using the gap in the dress form as kind of my center marker for the lines down her chest. And that was the easiest detail and I knew I would be able to place everything else around it. And I was, I used those measurements from the first one to create those initial side pieces. And honestly, all the other panels fell right into place as soon as I had that center done. I used each piece as the defining curve for the next one so that they would fit together nicely. And some of these are only attached at the edges because the actual outside of the armor is a different shape than that under chest plate that I had already made. I decided that doing it this way was going to be a lot easier overall instead of trying to do all of this and keep the shape of the body at the same time. One of the last details I decided to add to the armor was I added a bit of, I guess, piping or ribbing to the inside of the neckline and the insides of the shoulder or sleeves and the very bottom of the chest plate as well. I think this detail absolutely brought things together. It makes it look kind of more like a realistic piece of armor. It makes it look much more like her armor to be sure and kind of cleans up and hides all of those messy edges that I was a little unhappy with in the first place. If you do notice, uh, the front of the armor has been cut much more flat. It was originally very curved. Not entirely sure why that happened, but I was able to cut it flat and make it look more realistic and true to the original piece. So now to try to make the back of the armor. I decided to do this by taping the chest plate to the dress form and using a piece of parchment paper to kind of create a pattern of the space that I would need to fill in. Um, as that would move very easily and I could mold it and use that then to tape onto the foam itself. I did some measuring here and I tried to get the over the shoulder pieces to be the same length and then also the back side pieces to wrap around the same amount. Time to start spray painting. Uh, I did this outside at my boyfriend's house because I do not have enough space in my apartment to adequately spray paint this kind of stuff. And the base layer for the foam is something called Plasti Dip is what I used. You can also use Flex Bond. Uh, that's a brush on. Plasti Dip, however, is a spray and I was fighting with the wind. So I apologize if you see me consistently moving the plastic bags, but you cover it in about three to four coats usually and you get a really nice surface that you can then paint on top of. I did a base layer of a nice cranberry 
and then lightly brushed kind of a bronze copper on top of it to get the final desired look. Her chest plate is kind of a weird color. It is not fully bronze, it is not fully red, so getting that color accurate was a little challenging, but I do think I got there in the end, and I'm so happy with the final color. Oh. So, it fits. Um, there is a mild concern of, I don't really have much room to uh, move, and if I do, I pop the side, so I may remake these connection pieces to be a bit wider um, because I apparently don't know how to account for it being larger than it needs to be. I don't even know if my face is in frame high. But, so, it, and it's really hard to attach these cleanly by myself, so we're here. Um, I think I might try to remake them a little bit bigger, but it technically fits and it's fine, so we're here as you hear the Velcro continuing to crinkle. So, we're moving forward. Something I really love about her armor is it isn't clean. She isn't clean. She's an armorer, she's a blacksmith. You know, it's kind of rough and tumble and dirty. And so I decided to go in and this helped accent the armor a little bit because some of those seams in the pieces got a little bit lost with the layers of paint. And it really helps bring it together. So I made it a little bit more dirty, a little less clean, really outlining all of those edges. Um, specifically, all of those joints where foam pieces were joined together any of those raised edges, and then also kind of muddying up the flat areas so that it wasn't quite so uniform. I really was trying to break up that uniformity. So all along, all of those edges, all over the place, we put that detail and I think it looks great. So that's all I have planned for this video. As you can see, the chest armor is there. Other details to include is how I attached the fur, how I made her little sleeve caps, how I made the undershirt right there, how I made the belt and those attachment pieces, the weapon, and what I did with the helmet and the boot covers. There's a lot left that went into this cosplay, but I decided to focus on the main thing that was new to me, which was the foam armor. I do apologize for some of the gaps in the filming. I both have an insane amount of footage from this project and also seemingly like none. There are so many small steps and small details that went into this. I do apologize for missing or potentially glossing over some of those steps. This is my first attempt at a cosplay and I'm really happy with how it came out. Again, being my very first attempt at doing anything like this. So if you like this video, if you stuck around this far, please give it a like, uh, and also please subscribe to my channel. I do all sorts of fun things. There's more concerning the rest of this cosplay to come, and I very much hope to see you in the next one.